Have you ever stopped to wonder, what is reality? A question that has been pondered by philosophers, scientists and curious minds alike for centuries. It's a question that delves deep into the heart of our existence, challenging our perceptions and beliefs. Reality as we perceive it is a complex fusion of our sensory experiences, thoughts and emotions. It's a tapestry woven from the threads of our consciousness and shaped by our understanding of the world around us. Yet, the nature of reality remains an elusive concept shrouded in mystery and intrigue. Is reality merely a reflection of our senses, or is there more to it than meets the eye? Could it be a construct of our minds or perhaps a shared illusion? These are questions that have puzzled thinkers from time immemorial, sparking debates and discussions that continue to this day. Brace yourself as we journey through different philosophical perspectives to answer this question. We commence our exploration with the classical view of reality. This perspective, often considered the traditional or conventional understanding of reality, posits a world that exists independently of our minds. This implies that reality remains constant, unchanging, regardless of our thoughts, beliefs or perceptions. Let's wind back the clock to ancient Greece, a cradle of Western philosophy, and meet two of the most influential figures in classical thought, Aristotle and Plato. These thinkers, among others, contributed significantly to this view of reality. Plato, a philosopher par excellence, proposed the existence of a world of forms or ideas. For Plato, this world was the ultimate reality more real than the physical world we perceive with our senses. This realm of forms, he suggested, was timeless, unchangeable and independent of human minds. Now, let's turn to Aristotle, Plato's most famous student. Aristotle took a slightly different stance. He argued that the physical world we perceive and interact with is the ultimate reality. For Aristotle, reality was not in some abstract realm of forms, but in the tangible, concrete objects around us. And like Plato, Aristotle also believed that this reality existed independently of human perception. So both Plato and Aristotle, though with different emphases, supported the classical view of an independent reality, a reality that does not waver based on our individual or collective perceptions or beliefs, a reality that is objective, absolute and unyielding to the whims of human thought. This classical view has been a cornerstone in the field of philosophy and has shaped our understanding of the world in many profound ways. It has influenced scientific research, legal systems, and even our everyday thinking. It's the notion that there is a world out there that continues to exist whether we perceive it or not. This perspective, however, is not without its critics. As we shall see in the upcoming sections, numerous philosophical schools have challenged this view, proposing radically different conceptions of reality. So, according to the classical view, reality is objective and independent of our perception. And with that, we've set the stage for a deeper dive into the nature of reality. Stay tuned, as the journey promises to be an intriguing one. Now let's turn the tables and delve into the realm of idealism. Idealism, a philosophical doctrine, takes a leap away from the materialistic view of reality. It propounds that the fundamental essence of this reality we perceive is not physical or concrete, but mental and immaterial. It's a world where the mind takes precedence over matter. Idealism in its core advocates that the mind and its contents are all that truly exist. Let's take a moment to appreciate the intricacies of this view. Imagine, if you will, a world where everything you see, touch, smell, hear and taste is not independent of you, but rather a product of your perception. The tree you see outside your window, the coffee you taste in the morning, even the very screen you might be staring at right now, all exist because you perceive them too. A prominent philosopher who championed this view was George Berkeley. Berkeley, in his radical perspective, argued that we can only directly know sensations and ideas of objects, never the objects themselves. He contended that existence and perception are one and the same. In his own words, to be is to be perceived. This view, however, does not mean that things disappear when we stop looking at them, but rather that their existence is contingent upon a continuous perception by a mind. This mind, Berkeley postulated, could be that of another human or a divine omnipresent mind that perceives all. 
Idealism, as a philosophy, challenges our basic understanding of reality. It shakes the very foundation of our belief in the material world and places the mind at the center of the universe. It reminds us that our understanding of reality is tied to our perception and that perception is inherently subjective. Idealism, while not universally accepted, plays a significant role in our philosophical landscape. It pushes us to question, to ponder and to explore the depths of our minds. It forces us to confront the possibility that reality, as we know it, might be nothing more than the elaborate fabric of our perceptions. So in the world of idealism, reality exists within our minds. Scene script. How about a reality that is subjective and individualistic? Welcome to existentialism. We've now arrived at a philosophical viewpoint that challenges the notion of an objective, universal reality. This is existentialism a philosophy that places the human individual at the center of its understanding of reality. Rather than an objective world out there, it posits that reality is subjective, varying from person to person based on their experiences and perceptions. Let's take a moment to consider Jean-Paul Sartre, a prominent existentialist philosopher. Sartre believed that existence precedes essence, meaning that we exist first and define our purpose or essence through our actions. In this way, he contended that we create our own reality through our choices and actions. Consider this. If you choose to see the world as a hostile place, then that is your reality. If you choose to see it as a place of opportunity, that too becomes your reality. It's subjective, individualistic and deeply personal. Existentialism also grapples with the inherent meaninglessness and absurdity of life. Friedrich Nietzsche, another key existentialist thinker, famously declared that God is dead, suggesting that traditional sources of meaning and morality have collapsed. This leaves humans to confront a seemingly absurd universe and create their own meaning. In this sense, existentialism presents a reality that is fraught with uncertainty and anxiety. It's a reality where we are responsible for our own destiny and must continually strive to make sense of our existence. This might seem daunting, but it's also liberating. It means we are not simply passive observers in the world, but active participants shaping our own reality. Existentialism, therefore, offers a unique perspective on the nature of reality. It challenges us to question, to engage and to create. It reminds us that reality is not simply something that happens to us, but something we actively shape and define through our actions, attitudes and beliefs. Existentialism thus presents a reality that is deeply personal and subjective. We've journeyed through different philosophical landscapes, each presenting a unique view of reality. We began our expedition with the classical view, a perspective that firmly roots reality in the concrete world around us. It's the belief that reality is composed of tangible objects and physical phenomena that exist independent of our perception. This view, grounded in empirical and observable facts, suggests that the world is exactly as it appears to our senses. From there, we ventured into the realm of idealism. This philosophical perspective posits that reality is fundamentally mental, constructed by our thoughts and perceptions. According to idealism, our minds shape the world we perceive, with the physical universe merely a reflection of our internal consciousness. It's a perspective that challenges the assumption of a reality existing independent of our minds. Our final stop was existentialism, a philosophy that brings the focus back to the individual. In this view, Reality is subjective and personal, shaped by our choices, actions and personal experiences. Existentialism proposes that each person creates their own unique reality through their engagement with the world. Throughout this journey we have seen that the nature of reality isn't straightforward. It's not merely a physical world we can touch and see, nor is it simply a mental construct shaped by our thoughts. It's not even solely a personal reality defined by our experiences. Instead, it may be a complex interplay of all these aspects and more, constantly shifting and evolving as we navigate through life. This exploration into the nature of reality is not meant to provide a definitive answer, but to provoke thought and contemplation. The philosophies we've discussed are not mutually exclusive, and they don't encompass all the perspectives on reality. They are merely lenses through which we can examine and understand the world around us. 
So the next time you ponder upon reality, remember, it might just be as complex and varied as the philosophies that try to define it.